Hello YouTubers, it's Roxanne Holland from Roxas Cards and Crafts and your admin for the Australian Cricket Connect group, Facebook group and the American Facebook group Cricket Expression. Today I'm bringing you how to do an Eclipse frame card. Now the Eclipse card's been, or the technique, has been around for a while but it encouraged me to do a tutorial for four different programs and the reason being that you don't need an electronic die cutting machine to be able to achieve this uh, design look for a card. However, you can utilize the programs that you already have and you need a printer. I'm going to be teaching you how to do the fonts because I've used um, Character Map UWP to help with the fancy fonts. The design that you see on the card is a mix of probably about four different designs all put together and these are PNGs. So you need something that doesn't have a background. So your JPEGs have backgrounds. If you want it to be nice and easy, just select a PNG because they do not. I always make, my, if I'm making my cards in my die cutting machine programs or programs just to print, it's always nice to have a template. As you know, Cricut's already got its own templates here. Well, this is what these are. So you can't cut these out, but they're for visuals for you to use so you can go down there and then just hide that template. You simply go to shapes, press once and we'll use the free shapes. We're pressing this square, just one click. This is my card base. So my card I use is eight wide. So so I'm going to go to the padlock and unlock it. Double click on the on the width and I'm going to go 8. Double click on the height and go 6. So this is my card base. So let me just give it a nice little colour there. And if you wanted to use a line to score it with, that would be six in the height. Don't do the width for that. Select all of that, align and center. So there is the card. Obviously that's the half so you would score it down the halfway mark which is your four and that leaves your card to go there. So the next so I'm going to quickly run you through how to import your PNG PNG image. I want you to go to upload here on the left hand side, upload image and browse. Now I've got my file, I know where I put it so that's important that you know where you keep your files. If you're going to get into this uh, like I did, um, it's always handy to have an external hard drive and I try and put everything in there and that way it doesn't make my computer slow. Alrighty, so I am going to just select, I think I already selected the frame, which is this one. So you would select anything that you want to select. So you just, I'll go, I'll go with another one. Um, so what I'll do is, I'm going to go to Creative Fabrica because I buy a lot of their stuff and clip art, clip art graphics. Double click. Okay, as well as bringing in those lovely smoke flowers, if you wanted to, you could bring in another background. And so I've got them under backgrounds. So I also brought in some other PNGs like background. So this is like some ink ink writing. You can bring in anything as I said as long as they are PNGs. 
Okay, so I'm going to choose a file that I've stuck all my PNGs. I'm going to select one and uh, bring it in. So I've already brought in that image. So, so while I'm here, I'll bring in another one. Hold it. All right, so I've just chosen this one so I can use it another at a later date. I always choose complex. Next. So we don't have to do anything because it is a PNG file, so no cleaning up to do. If it was a JPEG, this is where you would use your background remover or your cropping and stuff. But we, it's already been done. Exactly how I like to do it. Apply and continue. Save this as print and cut. Because that's what it is. And upload. So I chose this one. This one. And this one. And I'm sure there was another one. Yep. Okay, it was probably that one and that one. So that's one, two, three, four, five different PNGs that I have chosen to go on that card topper. And that's where I bring that in. So while they're all selected, we're going to resize them. To do it just quickly, just go into the width and select five and press enter and that'll shrink them and there that's where you start putting all these and arranging them now let's see arranging them however you like putting them behind so that's behind turning them around just play with them, duplicate them, but make sure they fit in the card template. So we're going to the size there. I'm just going to go arrange and send to front. And that's basically what we're doing with the card. But wait, there's more you will then be using a die. So we'll go into shapes, press on the square. Now my die that I measured, so the outside larger rectangle measures, the height is, so unlock your padlock, height is three and a quarter so it's 3.25 the width is two and a half then I'm going to duplicate and this is my smaller inner die and the height is th is two and three eighths so that's 2.375 you can do your conversions and your width is one and a half. Select both of those, align, center. While they are highlighted, let's go down to the slice tool, the bottom right hand side, press slice, disappear and come back. Move away the outside, and there's two bits there. Highlight those both and get rid of them. So there is your die, or whatever the measurements are for your die. Now, in design space, we don't want that to be marring the, you know, I can't see the design. It's only for visual anyway, so it's no big deal. But if you select that, and then just select pen 
it will make it transparent and that way you will see what goes on the top frame so this is the frame that you will be raising and that smaller square so you will cut out two pieces this smaller square will be stuck down and this will have foam around it so if you want to make sure it, I mean you can offset it there's no hard or fast rule you can even make sure that that design fits directly in that frame but it doesn't matter because what you miss in the middle there will show up around the frame and then the rest will stay on the card okay so I'm going to now teach you how to do the font okay so you have downloaded onto your computer while design space is closed from Defont or Creative Fabrica the Bitai font. I also want you to install Character Map UWP. So we're going to dive into learning how to use the Character Map and we're going to do the Dear Friend and then you're going to use the same technique that I've done on the dear friend to do happy birthday as well. So open up your character mate U UWP go to the drop down menu and we're going to go to wherever you put whatever folders that you make your favorite things and there is my bit tie script now scroll to the very top it'll open up right at the top and then you'll first see the ordinary alphabet it's what I call the ordinary alphabet and then further down you'll get the alphabet with the the swishy tails and the glyphs and whatnot and rather than going up and down and up and down and up and down, this is why I say to do your ordinary, your ordinary alphabet first. So looking down here, down to the bottom left hand side of the page, we are going to do the words dear without the D because the D has a special swirl. So I'm going to double click the E, the A, the R, and I'm going to do about three spaces in between and I'm going to go the R for friend I E N so click back up onto the D we're going to scroll down to the swishes to the first one we see and this D is the swish going to the left, so I'm going to double click on that. Then I'm going to go to where the F was and click on that. And then where the D was and its swirl goes to the right. So we're going to go over here and go copy. And there you see it says copy and then we're going to minimize this and come back up on design space I want you to go to your text tool then I want you to go up to your font and mine's already on that but it yours will automatically come in as Cricut Sans so you go there and you press your down arrow come over to search fonts type in your bitay press the search icon there you'll see bitay script so 
select that. So click into add text here. And then I want you to select control plus V. Okay. Go up here to advance and ungroup letters. All right, so with all these um, separated, highlight the deer. With design space, you have to sort of do it one bit at a time, but instead of grouping, because I'm going to be moving the F, I'm just going to weld the deer together so they don't move around. Then we're going to move the F so that it goes over to the A. These should weld together. So let's go down to the right hand side and go weld. And then these ones we're going to move up to the F. Select all of them and go weld. So that's how you get your friend to so go select all and then go down to flatten then what I want you to do is duplicate that And I want you to put them close together and then I want you to select them both and attach. And I've done it that way because when you go to make it, there's your print and cut view and it will place those on your print and cut. It will print it, uh, which I'll show you the process shortly. All right, so I have prepared my cardstock. I'm using, I buy the ream from Officeworks and I'm using 300 GSM. So you can use 280 to 300 GSM. And all you need to do now is press continue. And send to printer so this is what uh, the next window that will crop up when you have sent printer preparing to print now it's important when you've got something like this that's not actually going to cut around but rather cut around the outside you need to turn off this bleed. So that needs to be turned off. That's really only good for stickers. So make sure that add bleed is turned off. You can use your system dialog if you choose and that's a good way of seeing what um, you know if you want best, normal, excellent printing. Now I'm going to select print and I'm going to move over with my camera so let's go print. So here it is fresh off the printer and what you need to do is line up the top left hand corner with the top left hand corner of your mat and I just line that up first there and hold that down and then guide it straight down there and then just give it a 
lot using briars. All right, so it still needs to be cut. So it still needs to be adhered well to your mat. So I've taken it from the printer and I've aligned it to the top left hand side of the mat. And if you're not sure if it's up the right way, just refer to the little preview over here, okay, on design space before you go out of the print and cut window. Alright, so then this is... Okay, so next step <clears throat> is to... Uh, you've got the flashing load lamp there. Hold my mat up a bit and load it properly. I'm going to check the dial. It's on cardstock. And then I have the second flashing, flashing light. So I'm going to press this. So the design space is preparing this mat to cut. It's just sending its signals. And now I'm just going to turn my mat over because I don't want to be hurting the card. The outside doesn't matter. All right, so here we have uh, the card base. This is the cutout from the My Explore Air 2, and I've just made a backing uh, a quarter of an inch more. Actually, it's one eighth of an inch more for um, this card, so it'll look it'll look like that when it's stuck down. So what I'm going to do. is glue this to there. side so what I want you to do is the dies that you have selected you are going to use some tape and I'm just using washi tape and all you really need to do is eyeball it make sure they're nice and straight the cutting sharp edge down so you're going to put the tape on the bit that doesn't cut and without moving it which good luck with that all right just hold that down and secure that and you really only need to do the other side
just carefully uh, bring it up. Okay. Bring over your platform. I'm using the magnetic plate, magnetic platform, but you might not have that and you can just use your other one. I'm going to use the plate that's had the most damage done to it. Now, so you've just stuck that down and now what we're doing is we're cutting, this is what I call the topper. So you put the topper on there, turn this to the landscape because of the design and then position it to every, wherever you like. So I'm just going to have it so that the flower is in the middle and looking at the sides to make sure that they're even on both sides and most importantly, that it looks straight. So the cutting is face down. Then I'm gonna put this on and I'll be back, I'll just run it through my Big Shot. Okay, I've just run that through the Big Shot. I'll get this out of the way. Just be careful when you remove that. And keep the bits that were dyed cut together for now. So what I want you to do is put them how they came out of your card and turn them over and I just want you to put just just you you don't always have to I never did this when I started but sometimes when you have a busy pattern when it gets cut out it's handy uh, so you can now it's handy so you can just pop it in without too much fuss. Uh, now this is where the foam tape is going so it will actually cover those so that's why I'm putting those there and then the inside one. So that's all it's doing is joining joining your pattern together. So now what we do is we stick this one onto our prepared card base. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll just grab my glue. Okay, I'll take that top off. Make sure that your card is going in whatever direction you need it to go from top to bottom or left to right. This one is left to right and it comes in another one eighth from that dark so blue. Make sure that's, that's looking nice and even and it should all fall into place nice and evenly. I'm nearly done. We'll move on to the next. And now the last step is this, this raising this frame. So we raise this frame with our foam tape. So turning that over, what I suggest you do when you take it out is take note of where the arrows go because that's the way it will be going in. But we're taking it away from this now, being very careful not to dig your nails or other instrument into it because it will dent it and you will see that on the final, the final outcome of the card. So, yep. 
So this is the frame and we're going to raise that. So I'm going to make sure I keep it going that way. And I'm quickly going to put the foam in the middle of this frame. So if your frame is bigger, just use a thicker or a wider foam tape. Now see how I put those arrows in, but I'm now going to cover them up. But like I said, you'll get used to your patterns. It's not that hard to put a piece together. It was just a little tip to hopefully make life a lot faster. So I'm taking note that it goes, well, obviously I'm gonna finish so that it's facing up. Plus I have an arrow there that tells me, so take these off, the backing off your foam. <laughs> Look for the arrow again, there it is, so that's the top. And you're going to inlay it again, but this time you want, so you, you'll be able to see where it goes in, but you'll also want to marry up the edges that were cut to the edges that are on your card. So, so I've got some flowers there with the stalk. Make sure it is put there perfectly. Got the fern, got the flower. Right, I'm just going to have a look at that. Yep, that looks really good. And there's your card. See how you can see that dark blue paper underneath? And you can't really, that the foam is nice and neat. People don't go looking at it and you can't see it anyway. And that is your card. So please go and download any beautiful image, PNG image from, there's plenty of places on the internet that you can find them and just have fun making this card. Thank you for watching and we'll look forward to uh, seeing you in another tutorial. Bye for now.